Right, this time I want to show you glues and how you use glues to their best advantage because so much of what I do depends on how the paint responds to the methods. So I have to really consider what's happening. For instance, the glues on these, which is collaged work which is then painted or left in these lovely white states. And this is just on paper that's been stretched, very good quality watercolour paper, 600 GSM. This is the image before it's painted, when you get all these lovely subtle colours from the threads and papers used. And then, of course, you can paint it. And the idea is that the paint is absorbed by the threads and the papers depending on the absorbency and the responsiveness of the papers and threads. So threads will pick up colour and papers will pick up colour and colour gets stuck in all the grooves. And of course if you use acrylic on this it doesn't have the responsiveness as watercolour because watercolour, the pigment is absorbed, it's so sensitive to the papers used. So it would be absorbed depending on the qualities of each of the papers that I've applied. However, watercolour isn't very light fast, so I will use flow medium with acrylics. I will make sure that they are dilute enough to be responsive to the attributes of the papers. This one's a lovely example of how the paints are absorbed so beautifully. So there's a lovely sensitive response to the most delicate of colours as it gets stuck into the corners and to the grooves of the image. And for instance here I've got different papers stuck onto the 600 GSM watercolour paper. But that say is a Fabriano paper used for printing so it's very cotton rich and is therefore very absorbent. I've got tissue paper stuck at the back and again that has a lovely effect where the paints get stuck in the grooves. And this is the Seagulls and Seascape image from the Seagulls and Seascape tutorial. This one can be done with either cellulose glue or the PVA glue. The difference between the two is that the cellulose glue remains absorbent, doesn't prevent the paint from being absorbed by the threads and the paper in the way that they naturally are inclined to do, so some being more absorbent than others. But the PVA glue has a tendency to form a layer. It's slightly plastic and it forms a layer so it stops that absorbency. Um, it's very good for acrylics because it actually primes the paper. It stops the paper from being quite so absorbent and forms this barrier, a plastic barrier, which is very acrylic friendly but it stopped the paper's natural absorbency. So this one's been stuck on horizontally all the bits and pieces and then the seagulls have been done separately and stuck on. And I use a PVA-C glue which is a pH neutral glue used in book binding. Even these glues have different attributes, the PVA-C glues and you must read the instructions and the description properly because it depends what you want. So if you want something that remains absorbent then you want the glues that don't form a barrier and that's the naturally occurring glues like the cellulose glues, the wheat starch glues. The cellulose glue and the wheat starch are both pH neutral. This one you get the water, sprinkle your powder in and stir sprinkle your powder in a little at a time and don't overdo it otherwise it'll go lumpy get it to a consistency you like and then leave it overnight to prepare the wheat starch glue you put one tablespoon of wheat starch in a clean microwavable container add five tablespoons of distilled water and then place the mixture into the microwave oven the microwave is on the high setting for 20 to 30 seconds Remove the paste and stir and then it's ready to use. This glue is just a cheap PVA glue used at primary schools for kids because it washes out of clothes. This product doesn't specifically say that it's pH neutral but I have researched it 
and found that the PVA glues are pH neutral and have archival qualities as in they're very consistent and durable. And this is an example of the canvas and threads stuck onto canvas. So this causes huge amounts of tension when it is drying or when it's dried and in fact throughout its life because the glue used is slightly water absorbent throughout its life. So I generally do this either on an aluminium stretchers or I apply the canvas to board first and then apply the canvas and strings for the textures. This one's been painted in white oils after it's finished just because it works so well as a relief painting in itself. And this one, I don't know if you can see this one, this one has been painted in coloured oils. But the glues that I use for this, I knew had to be archival, they had to have a longevity, they had to have a sort of proven record. And I was a traditional upholsterer, an antique chair restorer, and we used traditional glue size to glue things on. So not only is the glue size a primer for the, for the canvas, and it stops the oils from eating the canvas, rotting the canvas over a period of time because it creates a barrier. It can also be used as a glue. So this has got traditional glue size as glues. And here's my trusty glue pot. So this is a double container. The actual container itself has got an electric ring in it with a thermostatically controlled heater. I make the glues up in here, so I'll soak the glue size pellets overnight and then um, warm them up in here until they're the right consistency for the type of work I'm doing, either priming canvas or as glue. And then there's my abstracts. <laughs> this can be done on canvas board, on canvas, it depends what I want it to do and how I want the whole thing to behave. There's papers, fabrics, textures, all sorts on here. And again, you have to think, what is it you want it to do? Here, I put the gesso on and sprinkled it with paint while it was still wet. This is fabric and of course it absorbs the paint beautifully in this lovely, well, you can see, um, and here is just painted gesso. You know where the paint sits in the marks that the gesso has made? So you respond, really respond to what and how your, me your substructure behaves with the paint. So this one is just all acrylic on a very heavily gessoed paper. Or most of it is very heavily gessoed. But again, you get these really lovely different colours coming through just by layering the paint. And last but not least is the um, roaches scene that I was doing and teaching with. And this one is done with the PVAs. So that was the right way up. This one's done with the PVA glues, pH neutral PVA glues, and there is still some absorbency because the one that I use, which is this one, which is Linco, this is a slightly soluble. In theory, you can actually dilute it off again in the future if you don't like it. You know, you could lift this with, by soaking it. Um, I think it would do too much damage to the papers, oh, pretty obviously, but if it was more uh, solid, the structure, maybe you could pull it off and reuse it. But in any case, it's not very soluble, just a bit soluble. So I really looked into that. I didn't want it to be too soluble that it would respond to humidity and start to come away, but I didn't want it to be too plasticky that it completely resisted and therefore wasn't, didn't allow any absorbency. So this one seemed to me to have a happy medium. The other one I did use a lot. You see, that's about 11 quid. So this is about 11 quid for that little bottle. There's eight fluid ounces. This I get from hardware stores. That one was four quid. And this is a really good high bond strength. Look, external and internal use. 
it's non-soluble when it's dry. Again, having researched this, I found that PVA glues are naturally pH neutral. But in order to keep the whole process archival, I now use all these. Okay, I hope that's been of some help. If you have any more questions about these glues, if you need recipes or advice, please put them in the comment section below. Also, if the video is any use to you whatsoever, please remember to like and subscribe, it really helps. Um, see you again. Thank you very much for watching. All the best.